you know that guy, Jake, the fake, the Muslim metaphysician. What's the uh, what's the Jewish scholar's name? Um, um, he did an interview with Luis Dazon. If you actually do some research and look at the literature on it, from from what I'm able to tell, is that the authors will actually tell you that these things, which are claiming to be rooted in Judaism, were actually previously rooted in paganism. So I don't think it's actually a good thing to for Christians to appeal to it, because if they want, then they're seemingly endorsing paganism and uh, polytheism. Do you have any specific um, uh, literature or scholars that um, you can mention that make this argument? Uh, not offhand, but I know that um, what's the uh, what's the Jewish scholar's name? Um, Um, not was it Benjamin Summer? Friends, it's a delight to be here today with Professor Benjamin Summer, an earlier book of his, The Bodies of God and the World of Ancient Israel. We're actually previously rooted in paganism. In fact, it's not so pagan. In fact, there was a monotheistic version of this that existed already in the Tanakh. So this is not just Greek paganism sort of smushed onto a Jewish, uh, a Jewish mold. And if you actually do some research. I don't think it's actually a good thing to for Christians to appeal to it. In fact, to say that three is one, heck, the Kabbalah is going to go further than that. They say ten is one. <laughs> um, the Zohar, Sefer Habahir, they say ten is one. And actually, when you get to Luriana Kabbalah, and there's the idea that within each of the Sefirot, each of the ten Sefirot has ten Sefirot within it, so that we've got a hundred different sphere wrote really we're taking this reasoning much much farther than the christians did and if you actually do some research and look at the literature on it so actually one of the more radical conclusions that i came to much to my own surprise when i was writing this book and this is not at all what i had intended to do because in various ways that we could discuss if you're interested i'm actually rather uncomfortable with my own conclusion here but as a scholar i gotta call him as i see him one of the conclusions that I came to, to my shock when I finished this book, is that we Jews have no theological objection to the doctrine of the Trinity. I came to the conclusion that we Jews have no theological right to object to the Trinity. From what I'm able to tell. Theologically, I think that the model of the Trinity is an old ancient Near Eastern idea that shows up in the Tanakh and that in a different way shows up in Jewish mysticism as well. Jake, the fake. As a scholar, I got to call him as I see him. Benjamin Summer. We Jews have no theological objection to the doctrine of the Trinity. There is a hadith, Sahih Muslim. It starts out by talking about how Muhammad is like the prophets who came before him. And he likens it to someone who builds a house. And it's just about to be made complete. But you need that one final brick, that one final piece of that house to make it complete. So he says, I am that final brick. So Muhammad is claiming to be the culmination, the fulfillment, the continuation of the prophets before him. If it is true that Islam is the fulfillment of what came before it, then how can it depart from the roots Jewish roots and Christian roots of things such as the multiple persons of God, which Jake didn't touch on, and Jesus being God or the incarnation or things like that, theophanies. These things are all rooted in Judaism. Jake is giving the impression that he's actually read the literature on this topic, and one of the scholars he mentions is Benjamin Summer. Does Benjamin Summer actually say that Christian doctrines like the Trinity, does he actually claim that these are pagan? In fact, he says the exact opposite. We Jews have no theological objection to the doctrine of the Trinity. He appeals to a guy who actually contradicts the very thing Jake is saying. He goes on to say, No Jew sensitive to Judaism's own classical sources. He's saying classical sources, not paganism, not whatever Jake was talking about. He's saying classical Jewish sources. Returning to the quote here. No Jew sensitive to Judaism's own classical sources, however, can fault 
the theological model Christianity employs when it avows belief in a God who has an earthly body as well as a Holy Spirit and a heavenly manifestation. For that model, we have seen, is a perfectly Jewish one. Does he say that it's a perfectly pagan one? No, he's saying it's a perfectly Jewish one. No scholar, no scholar in this field claims that these beliefs come from paganism. They're saying that it comes directly from the Hebrew Bible. One more example of another Jewish scholar, Professor Daniel Boyarin teaches at University of Berkeley. He writes in his book called The Jewish Gospels, when there were many Jews who believed in something quite like the Father and the Son, and even in something quite like the incarnation of the Son in the Messiah. A time in which the question of the difference between Judaism and Christianity just didn't exist as it does now. Jesus, when he came, came in a form that many, many Jews were expecting, a second divine figure incarnated in human, in a human. The question was not, is a divine Messiah coming, but only, is this carpenter from Nazareth the one we are expecting? Not surprisingly, some Jews said yes, and some said no. Today we call the first group Christians and the second group Jews. It's not a Jewish offshoot of paganism. These are Jewish expressions of the faith based in the Hebrew scriptures.